you lose your clarity of thinking you lose your concentration you lose your energy so what should you do three things specific things i'm telling you number one look for a higher purpose in life this is very important now you all are working for a company i don't work for the company so I, i'm not talking for the company i'm talking for you what is your attitude are you thinking about what is my next bonus my salary my promotion this is selfish i am not saying you should not get a good salary or a bonus but your attitude should be how can i serve this organization how can i serve my country there should be a higher purpose if you have a higher purpose your mind becomes peaceful remember that it is selfishness which agitates you stresses you out see what edward carpenter had to say the philosopher of england never before could i have believed it but i see it all now there is no happiness unless you have clean dropped thinking of yourself i know friends these are difficult concepts because everybody tells you every day think of yourself and here's a guy from india coming and telling you no think of a higher purpose in life you take it's your choice ask yourself where are you stressed when you think what's going to happen to me just stop that me you'll be all right this is what churchill had to say when he tried to inspire the englishman in the second world war he said my countrymen we make a living by what we get but we make a life by what we give and that's how england was able to win the war by changing the attitude so you should be inspired to work and that inspiration comes when you have a higher purpose number 1 number 2 is you need to build your intellect by questioning by examining your life so what is the specific thing to do you must try and get up little earlier than you actually do now let's say you're getting up at 6:30 more in the morning i would tell you try and get up by 6 by 5:30 if you can because early morning is the time which is best for intellectual development your mind is least disturbed by the world this is a very important tip in fact somebody forwarded me an article by ceos you know they took a survey of ceos and found a common trait all of them are early risers most of them they don't know it we are, we have researched it it has been researched for thousands of years see you ask a drunkard to drink he will early in the morning he'll say no i want to drink in the evening why somebody asks you to go to a night club early in the morning you'll say no let's go tonight why because early morning you are least disturbed by these extroverted pursuits you can think on your own so use that time use nature's gift wisely think about your life early in the morning and it takes time though of course like i told you so what i'm going to do third third thing is how you can use your existing intellect now and how you can do that is it's an exercise called assessment you must learn to assess the nature of things and people around you see what i mean is i live in new york right in the new york metro now nobody asked me to live here it's going to be cold in winter now i should understand that i must assess this is new york now you see uh, this morning also it was cold i went out and my neighbor oh my god it's so cold now i wanted to say why who asked you to live here man you you live in new york and you want the weather to be like florida it's not going to happen so when you assess you have reasonable expectations now i go to a place like california for lectures and the weather is beautiful but they always complaining of traffic 
We know the traffic here is so bad. Now who asked you to live in LA? Man? LA is 20 million other people. There will be traffic. So assessment. So if you put that up on the board there, lack of assessment, unreasonable expectations, disappointments, stress. So all you need to do is have proper expectations and how that comes is by using your intellect and assessing. Hmm? So you must assess what's the nature of my boss, what's the nature of my wife, my children and have perfect assessment. Then there's no problem. But if you don't assess, you have unreasonable expectations, you will be disappointed, you'll be stressed. Hmm? See, one guy came to me, he says, you know, my marriage is good but there's one problem my wife she really nags me you know she she nags me all the time i don't know what to do i said you want to divorce her he said no i said then there's no problem just assess i said you must assess uh like you assess in animals right a tiger has a ferocious nature they will be ferocious you can't expect a tiger to behave like a lamb can you so I showed him this diagram, which I'm showing you. So I said, see, every human being has a specific inherent nature. Remember these two words, friends, every human being you deal with specific inherent nature, inherent and specific, it's unique to them. So their thoughts are like that. Their desires are like that. Their actions will be like that. Let's say you're a musician, you have a nature of music, your thoughts will be to play music, your desires will be to play music, you will be a musician. So I told, her, told him, now assess your wife, man, her nature is to nag, therefore her thoughts are to nag you, her desire is to nag you, she will nag you, that's it, where's the problem? Now you come home and the nagging starts, you must say, I've come to the right house, man. Hmm? If she didn't nag you, you should be worried because you've come to somebody else's house, right? I mean, it's so simple. Each one has their nature. You can't expect a tiger to behave like a lamb. You can't expect a musician to be a businessman. You can't expect a philosopher to be a mathematician. Similarly, you can't expect your boss to be cool or your wife not to nag or your husband to... Because that's the problem you have in life with your relationships. You're stressed out. My husband eats too much. My children play too much. My, that's their nature. That's it. So, very, very useful to manage your stress, to manage yourself. Assess the nature around you. So finally, let's summarize what we have learned so far. You can put that up on the board. Three things you have to do. Number one, build your intellect. Think, question, examine, and wake up early. Specific. Two, use your existing intellect by assessing your world and managing your expectations. And three, look for a higher purpose in life, not just me and mine. That'll inspire you to live life to the fullest. These are the eternal principles of self-management. Now, how do you start building your intellect? I do understand that it's difficult to think on your own. So what my teacher did, he's 94 now, and he's written a lot of books on philosophy. But later in his life, he wrote a book called Governing Business and Relationships, which will help you. Those of you who are interested to start building your intellect. It's specifically meant for getting started. So it has chapters on stress, 
on how to concentrate, be more productive, like we just discussed, the right value systems, managing relationships, and it's available everywhere on Amazon or in the you know the ebook versions in Apple or Google. So it'll help you.